I'd like to welcome you to the Midweek Bible Study of the Mount Carmel Church. We're so glad that you're able to watch and to listen tonight. Um, this week is a very, very busy week. We're getting ready for Bible school, which is going to start on the 4th, which is Sunday evening. And uh, be Sunday evening, Monday evening, Tuesday evening, Wednesday evening, and Thursday evening. So please be praying for our Bible school. And if you have a child from the age of 3 through the age of 12, we would love to have them come and be part of our Bible study. It will be uh, each night from 6 o'clock to 8.30, around 8.30. So we would like to invite you to uh, bring a child and to come out to our Vacation Bible School. The great uh, jungle journey. We'll be looking at from the book of Genesis through the book of Revelation in, in just a few uh, quick nights, but just a great time to, uh, to bring kids out and to share the gospel with them. But we're glad that you're able to watch and listen tonight in our midweek Bible study. Let's have a word of prayer as we start our Bible study. I just pray that you have an open heart for the last part of our study in this uh, passage that we've been looking at from chapter 4, uh, 1 through verse 12, and looking at God's will. We'll do just a little brief review, and then we're going to finish up verses 9 through 12 tonight. But let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for those that are able to watch and to listen tonight. We uh, just praise you for the beautiful week, the beautiful weather we've had, Lord. And we just ask for your continued guidance in all that we say, all that we do. I, I pray for uh, the Mount Carmel Church as we prepare for Bible school this week, Lord, and get some things together and and meet with teachers and helpers. I first of all thank you for all those that are willing to help and to teach. But we just also ask for your guidance and direction in our lives and in, in, uh, in our ministry. Lord, I pray for each and every one listening and watching as they look to you for just guidance and direction in their lives. I pray, Lord, that they would continue to uh, look to you. And Lord, I pray for those that may be having some some different health issues, Lord. We know there are many. We have a, a a prayer list, Lord, that has countless numbers of people on. And Lord, you know each and every person. And Lord, we just pray for them. We pray for those that are struggling. Maybe someone is struggling that is watching, Lord, that they would continue to look to you for guides. We also pray as we look at this passage of Scripture in chapter 4 again, Lord, as we've taken a couple of weeks to look at this, but, Lord, how that we see your will, we see the importance of purity in our lives. And then we see this whole area of just a brotherly love and an orderly life. And, Lord, we just pray for our study tonight as we continue down through this uh, chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. And we ask for your guidance and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I said, we want to finish up our study of this portion of chapter 4. We've been looking at verses 1 through verse 12. So if you follow along, I'd like to read uh, verses 1 through 12 again. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. That means to be set apart, and that's God's will for our lives as Christians to be set apart. That you should abstain from sexual immorality. We see that area being pure. That each of you should know how to possess his own vessel or take care of his own body in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. That no one should take advantage of the defraud and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God, to love one another, and indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. 
But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your hands, own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. You know, in just a little bit of review last week, we looked at primarily verses 6 through verse 8. We actually looked from verse 4 up through verse 8, but in verses 6 through 8, we're given three reasons why we should abstain from sexual immorality or that whole area of purity in our lives. The first one we find in verse 6, to avoid God's punishment, where it says that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. You know, this is a tough verse for us to hear. We know that God will avenge a lost person's sins, but we don't normally think of what this means for the believer. And uh, I just want us to, to think on that and to kind of think through that, because Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 tells us, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. You know, don't be deceived. God always takes action, and you will not be able to escape the, the painful results of sinful choices that we make in our lives. We also saw last week in verse 7 to live out our purpose in verse 7. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to holiness. You know, if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, our purpose now is to live a holy life. We're, not to, we're to separate ourselves, just as we saw a little bit earlier, this, this whole area of the idea of this, the will of God, your sanctification to be set apart. We are to live holy lives. We are to live Christ-like, and, and that is a lifelong process. We're not to mix in with the world or be not seen as a Christian. But we are to, to be able to spread God's Word, be able to show God's Word. But purity is something that we really need to think about. We need to live out our purpose. We also see to experience God's power. In verse 8 it says, Therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who has also given us His Holy Spirit. Now, just a little test for you. When does the Holy Spirit come and live within us? I hope that as soon as I said that, you said, well, as soon as we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells in us. That's the right answer. The Holy Spirit gives us power. It enables us and empowers us. It empowers us to get through those tough times. It empowers us to, to walk away from temptation. It, it gives us that power to, to say no when we know we're not where God wants us to be. You know, Galatians chapter 6, verse 16 says, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. As we submit and surrender to Him daily, He will bring a harvest of righteousness into our lives. So now we get down to verse 9, and uh, we see this whole next area where we need to be in harmony by loving one another in verses 9 and 10. You know, we move from holiness to harmony. But verse 9 and 10 says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed you do so toward all the brethren who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more and continue in brotherly love, the importance of that. You know, the more we live like God, the more we will love one another. You know, once again, Paul kind of gives them some encouragement. He's encouraging them for yet another evidence of their faith. As they grew in their discipleship, their love grew for one another. And they experienced that love as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
They not only loved those in, in their church, as we read, they were known as lovers of people in the entire region of Macedonia, as we see that, as it says, and indeed you do so towards all brethren who are in Macedonia. Macedonia. You know, the more and more that we grow in a relationship with Jesus Christ, the more we will show godly love to others. You know, that's all part of that relationship, isn't it? We also see that our growing relationship with God will result in growing relationship, as I said, with, with others. And the importance of that. We can demonstrate real love by treating each other as we would want to be treated. You know, we are called to do whatever we can to build believers up in their faith. And how do we do that? We do that by loving them as much as God loves us. Anyone know how much God loves us? Boy, it's a lot, isn't it? He sent His Son to a cross to die for us. In verse 10, it challenges us to not ever slow down in our love. You know, we might be doing okay, but it's always short of where we should be. In the area of love, we can never sit back and feel like we've done enough. And I think sometimes we get kind of complacent, don't we? Well, I'm, I'm okay, I, I'm okay, I, I did this, I did that. But as we look in Scripture, we see that Jesus never stopped. And as Paul is pointing out to the church at Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, you've done a great job. You've loved those around you. You loved even those in the other regions, Macedonia. But continue to love as God loves you. We also see in verses 11 and 12, to be honest by being a light to others, in verse 11 and 12. Be holy by living in purity. Be in harmony by loving one another. And then be honest by being a light to others. Now, as we think of that word light, what does light mean? Or what do we think of when, when there's light? We think of hope, don't we? You know, if you've ever been in a tunnel before and you started in that tunnel and it may be dark at the other end, and you continue to go and then you see that light and it builds and it builds and it builds, well, that's hope that we're going to get out soon. But light, being light in this dark world, you know, the final theme that we see in verses 11 and 12 is to be honest by being a light to others. Look at verse 11 and 12. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. How important that is in our lives, isn't it? The driving force of our life should be to shine the light of the gospel on those who are still on the outside. You know, as we think of this, this is kind of encouragement and motivation for us to practice purity in our lives, to practice loving others in our lives. You know, to live a quiet life is the answer to the problem of restlessness. That word quiet speaks of the end of conflict, of peace, after uh, some sort of war or warfare. We also see be ambitious or aspire. Paul says to live quietly. You know, we need these words because our ambition tends to be noisy, to make a splash, a name, to get ahead, to, to rise above the crowd. A famous pastor translates this phrase with two words, stay calm. Stay calm. You know, to mind your own business is the answer many times to the problem of putting our nose where it doesn't belong. You ever heard that term? Don't get your nose put where, where it shouldn't be. You know, to mind our own business in our lives and worry about us. Yes, we're to worry about others. Yes, we're to worry about our family. 
But many times we get so caught up in other people's lives that we forget about who? We forget about us. You know, not too many people appreciate a person that's always in other people's business. As I thought about that, I, I just was thinking, you know, what are some signs, signs that a person, um, that a person is in, has crossed kind of the line of genuine concern and started meddling? And I thought about that, and I wrote down three of them, and I hope, I mean, there's probably many more. But the first one I wrote down is you base your happiness on what others do or say. You're trying to mold somebody else's life, and that makes you happy when they're, they're doing what you want them to do. Another one was you repeat your advice over and over, hoping to convince somebody. Well, if you only do it this way, if you only do it this way, Instead of maybe kind of praying for them, it's not wrong to point things out to them, but allow them to work the same as we had to work. Not in a frightful way, not seeing them go down the wrong path and say, well, they'll learn on their own. That's not what I'm meaning here. But so many times we see it from our eyes and don't truly understand where they are. The third one that I wrote down is you judge others on whether or not they do what you say. You know, I, I, as I was writing that down in my notes, I thought, you know, over my life there's been times where I've given some advice or thought I gave some advice or maybe I just gave my own opinion and really wanted somebody to do something a certain way. And uh, we need to watch. We need to be concerned. We need to be praying. We need to point out in people's lives when things are going in opposite directions. But we need to allow the Holy Spirit to work also. You know, the best way to light the path for non-Christians is by working honestly and leading a quiet life of integrity. You know, we should be aware of our own business as we avoid gossiping and backbiting. You know, we should be looked at as Christians as someone that is willing to show love. And first we looked in this passage all about purity, you know, staying pure, but then loving one another and loving others and showing that love. But also being one that is willing to give advice when someone asks for it be willing to be praying, as I said, for somebody. Be concerned about where we are. But also allow our lives to show the love of Christ. You know, people will see Jesus in us through the influence that we have from day to day in our day to day life. Because, you know, our day-to-day -day lives, those habits, speak volumes. You know, I often think of, of parents today. How that in times children are watching them. Or maybe a spouse is watching their spouse. How they react, what they do. And sometimes, it's, it's, it's not sometimes, but a lot of the times, people are wondering what we're doing how we'll react. You know, as I've often said, there was a song many years ago by Steve Green, you may be the only Jesus that some will ever see. And how true that is. I've had in my lifetime people say from time to time about other, about people, well, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be like that. What I take from that is we're not showing this love that we're talking about here. We're not showing that quiet life where we mind our own business. And that we're willing to work hard and be committed. And that we walk in an upright fashion showing Christ's love. 
You know, the greatest witness you will ever have is the life that you lead. As I think about that, I think at times we've all blown it, haven't we? There's times in our lives where we wish, boy, I wish I could have that moment back. And God places people in our lives and times in our lives where we are to show His love and care and concern to others. You know, how do you lead a life that pleases God? How do you do that? Well, first you need to set yourself apart from sexual immorality. That's the, the purity part. Don't get caught up in sexual immorality, and it's all around us today. The sad part is there are many that think, well, I only dabble in it here, I only dabble in it, in it there, and no one will ever know. Well, God knows. And what's coming from your heart is eventually it'll show up in your life. So set yourself apart from sexual immorality. Love your brothers and sisters in Christ. Be willing to share with them. Be willing to show God's love to others. Be willing to help somebody in need. Be willing to come alongside somebody. And the last one is live with honesty and integrity so that others can see God's love through you. You know, the unfortunate part today, and it's very sad, too many today are living anxious, guilt-ridden lives with no sense of vision for what God wants them to do. Paul was wanting them to live a life that is pleasing to God. There was a lot going on here. They First of all, they lived in a, a seaport city where there was many people there. Much sexuality was going on there all around them, and they, he was calling for them to be pure. He was calling for them to love others as they were loved. And they had been doing that. He gained great credit for, for doing that, but he also said to keep going. In the back, last part of verse 10, it says that you increase more and more. Then we see in verse 11 and 12 as we looked at it, and let me just read them to you again. That you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that you may walk properly towards those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Great passage of Scripture, a great challenge, a great reminder to us. You know, the glory of the gospel is that we can always have a fresh start and a new beginning, no matter where we're at. We have all messed up in our lives in one way or another. We've had those messy times. But we have a God through His Son, Jesus Christ, that loves us. So much that He died on the cross for our sins. It's never too late to stop. It's never too late to start. It's never too late on that path to turn around and start walking back. Because Jesus has something that he wants to say to us. In his conversation with the woman caught in adultery in John 8, 11, he says this to us. Where he says, Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you, Go and sin no more. We can't do anything to change the past. However, we can do something about the future. God wants us to fix our eyes on Him. In closing, we're not going to sing today, but there's a hymn that we have sung many times in our churches over the years. And let me just say a part of the verse of it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look fully into his wonderful face and the things of this earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace Jesus right now as a Christian is holding your face in his nail scarred hands will you look up and follow him I pray that you will and I pray that you have been
Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for all that you do for us. And we just pray, Lord, for continued guidance and direction in our lives. We pray for direction in, in all that we say and do. And Lord, as we look at this passage, we see first of all that we are to stay pure. And, and Lord, I challenge, the challenge is to each and every one of us to remain pure. And I pray that we are remaining pure. I pray that we are showing love to others by reaching out to them. Lord, we ask for your continued guidance there as we can love others, but we need to continue to love others. And in the last part in verse 11 and verse 12, talk about this area of, of just being considerate, being willing to bear one another's burdens. Be willing to be honest. Be willing to have integrity. And to show through our lives the love, the joy that we find through Jesus Christ. But also to show that we are a true servant of yours. Lord, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for this night. And Lord, we just pray for all those watching and listening, not only on the upload here, but also in our church building, Lord, that you would guide. I pray for this week, as it's a very busy week, Lord, getting ready for Bible school, but I pray that we would all come together, and Lord, that the gospel would be presented in a way that children will absorb it next week. I pray for children to come out also, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening tonight and again just a reminder about our VBS coming up on Sunday evening if you have a child from the age of 3 through the age of 12 um, we'd love to have them come and be part of our VBS program but also like to invite you if you don't have a church family that you call home you live in the Mahaffey Punxsy area we would love to have you come and be part of the Mount Carmel Church we're located at 3023 Clover Run Road, Mahaffey, Pennsylvania. Our phone number is 814-277-4435. If you have any questions about VBS or church or anything that you heard tonight, my name is Pastor Brian. I'd love to talk to you about it. But thank you for watching and listening tonight, and may God bless.